and Brody. So the first game that we're gonna talk about is Tug with Rules. So Tug of War, contrary to popular belief, can actually be a wonderful outlet for uh, dogs, especially ones that are really jumpy and mouthy and maybe they start tugging on the leash when they get excited by things outside on walks. Um, tug of War can be a really solid outlet for that. There are a couple foundation behaviors that your dogs need to know. Sit, wait, and drop. So we're gonna talk about how you can teach those different behaviors and then how to put it all together to create the game and what it looks like when it's all said and done. One last thing I wanted to mention, just to help um, prevent your dog from getting injured during this game. It's really important that instead of going up and down with their cervical spine, we go side to side just to prevent any injury. So if you notice that when I'm playing a game with him, take it, good job. I'm going this motion instead of up and down. So that's gonna help protect that back and their cervical spine. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is teach the drop portion. So I have the one toy that I'm gonna bring out from behind my back, let him kind of tug it a little bit, and then I'm gonna bring out the other one. And the reason I'm bringing out the second one is so that he drops the first one to go for the second one. Ready? Get it, bud. Get it. Ah. starts dropping it and then you can end up putting it on cue. Present. Drop. Yes. If he jumps though, the toy briefly goes away. Present. Drop. Yes. Good boy. And it's really important that you don't let them jump on you. This is where the impulse control comes in. Yes. And that time you actually offered it um, the drop right away because he was anticipating it. Drop. Yes. Good boy. All right. We'll do one more. Drop. Yes. Good boy. All right. We'll give him a little break. Good job, bud. All right. So now that he's got the drop portion down, we're going to start with step two, which is adding in the sit. So sit, once your dog's really fluent in the game, is what starts the game. Crescent. Sit. Yes, take this time I'm going to ask him to drop and then sit. Drop. Present. Drop. Sit. Yes. Good boy. Good job. Drop. Sit. Yes. Good boy. All right. Good boy. Good job. All right, so part three, now that he's got the drop, the sit down, we're gonna start adding in the weight. This is really where the impulse control comes into effect. So essentially what's gonna happen is he's gonna sit, I'm gonna present it and ask him to wait for starting out just a split second. You can start adding in more duration as they get better, but don't ask them to go very long um, right out of the gate. Sit. Good. Wait. Take. Good job. Good boy. Good job. Drop. Sit. That's frustration. Wait. Take. Good job. So as the game gets harder, sometimes your dog gets frustrated and they might do a little bee and barking. Present. Up, up, up. Okay, everybody. Sit. Wait. Take it. Good job. Excellent. And again, as your dog gets better and better at this, you can build up more duration with the weight. But the um, biggest thing is making sure that at any point in time, if your dog jumps on you, um, or do hand barks like he did to me, um, or even jumps up and accidentally makes contact with your skin, then you pause or stop the game. <laughs> it needs to happen just as great of a time with the toy dead on the floor without me even attached to it. So it's a fun game all around. So if you have a dog that likes to chase things, like Crescent here, 
and you also happen to have some feline friends at home, it's important to provide them with appropriate outlets so they don't start chasing your cat friends um, and instead chase something like this flirt pole that I have here in front of us. So in just a moment, I'm gonna show you how we can use this flirt pole to teach really strong impulse control and give them an appropriate outlet for those genetically hardwired behaviors. So for Crescent, the flirt pole is extremely stimulating to the point that he has a really hard time doing behaviors that he knows really well, like a drop or a down. Um, so for him, my criteria, I start out very low to keep him from getting frustrated because when he gets frustrated, he barks a whole lot. So in just a moment, I'm gonna have the toy go live and he's gonna get that outlet of chasing and going after the prey item and I'm gonna let him catch it. And what I'm gonna ask for is a drop. As soon as he drops and releases the um, object, the toy's gonna go live again. He gets to do it all over. Ready? Ah, yeah. oh, good boy. Good job. And tug it a little bit, make it a little more fun. And then I'm gonna ask him to drop. Only say it once and wait. Yes. Ah, oh, good boy. Good job. Good boy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 